Ridley, uh, May 29, 1985.
Chaos Land. Say hi to the folks at home. Hi to the folks at home. Come to YouTube when you're watching. <laughs> Look at the camera. Now. When I do what? <laughs> Now have an interview with our driver trailer here with Anderson, Haley from Anderson. Quick, what do you have to say for the folks back home? Okay. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi,
defend her title in women's slalom this afternoon against Susie Graham. The rope length is 43 feet. Graham was successful at this length earlier. Well, let's see what she does in the final. Two tall and very strong skiers in the final. Susie Graham's, the start is so important. She wants to be wide, but without too much speed, slow out of one. Needs a good turn here in two. And she's a little slow out of two. I don't know, she's getting further and further behind. Gets a nice turn out of four, come around five. Now she's gonna be careful not to, and she overturns a little bit, gonna get outside of number six. And she takes a rough fall around number six. Five and a half buoys credited for Susie Graham at the 43 foot rope length, so she was not able to match her successful run of the semifinals. If Camille can go all the way through, she'll be the winner again. Camille comes out of one better than Susie. She's pulling very well, looking smoother than she did in some of the prior runs. Say her arm isn't bothering her at all, and she's gonna go right around number six, and it's another victory for Camille Duvall. A beautiful run at 43 feet. Now in this competition, she can elect to go on and try for a world record while she makes her decision. Let's watch some beautiful skiing. Get a good look at the style and technique and determination of Camille Duvall. She's a consummate competitor. She always seems to be able to come up with just what's necessary to advance to the next round or to win the competition. It almost appeared, Wayne, that she wanted to make sure that she did not re-injure herself. She skied with great determination. Now she makes another run. She's at a 40-foot rope here, two and a half feet of extra rope to get around the buoy. She's really hanging on to some slack rope, straightens up there. Around number four, she's having a terrific attempt at a 40-foot line, pulling for number six and gets over a little too far to hang on. I think she's gonna be happy with that run. She cannot get out of the gate. Five and a half will be credited at 40 feet, but that's more than enough to make her the champion once again. Camille buckles or breaks at the waist, hesitates her turn. Now she's digging and fighting to get around number six, gets the ski to the outside, drops the handle in the water. It really throws her out of balance and isn't gonna be able to hold on. But I think she's gonna be happy with this performance today. I know she's gonna be happy. Thank you. Sore. But a happy sore. Yeah. A happy sore indeed. For the fourth consecutive year, Camille Duvall has won the women's slalom here in Shreveport, Louisiana at Champion Lake. She'll pick up another 1,000 Grand Prix points. And in the process, she pads her lead in that category. Camille Duvall is going for another women's championship on the Coors Light Water Ski Tour. She finishes first this afternoon. The winner now is standing by with Wayne. Camille, outstanding performance. Uh, I guess uh, the arm didn't bother you too much. Well, it was a little bit sore, but I was feeling pretty good, and I felt, felt really confident and high from skiing good yesterday, and I wanted to go after that world record. I was so close yesterday. It's something I've always wanted. That's the closest I've ever come, and I really wanted it again today, but it wasn't to be. I'm still managing to find the shade in my location, and other people are manufacturing shade. Wayne, as I pointed out, can't do that. He has to stay busy. To Miami Vice. You know what? These tour events, there are a lot of things to do and see besides the water skiing and the girls. Scattered throughout the tournament ski site, exhibitors display all the latest products in the world of water skiing. We have the latest in marine transportation available for $15,000 to $25,000, and you might just be able to drive home with one of those today. Or maybe just a little horsepower. Now, if all that is too high priced for you, there are other accessories available. Some of the biggest leaps in technology have been made in skis. For those more thrifty, perhaps a t-shirt, visor, or bathing suit is more in order. No doubt a quick visit to the exhibition area will provide you a different glimpse of the water ski tour. As you can see at these tour events, they've got the latest in gear and sometimes you just might get carried away. What do you think? Is it me? Wayne definitely has been in the sun too long. Find some shade. The men's slalom coming up from Shreveport. Performance skier. To be good takes a lot. The right equipment, physical conditioning, mental conditioning, preparation. Information is part of the mental conditioning. Water Ski Magazine is a piece of the equipment. 
Instructional information on slalom, tricks, jumping, barefoot, equipment tips, kneeboarding, and all facets of recreational skiing. Water Ski, the world's leading water skiing magazine. Pick up the phone and call 1-800-722-7000 right away. Great doesn't come easy, but Water Ski Magazine does. Loaded with the hottest photography and the newest information on water skiing around the world. Water Ski Magazine, part of the equipment for performance skiing. 1-800-722-7000. Top-ranked boxing showdown of the year. Bert Cooper takes on Tyrone Booz for the North American Boxing Federation Cruiserweight title. Tuesday on ESPN. They're the best in what could be boxing. I'm John Sanders, and we sail on in this competition to the men's slalom. We have completed the semifinals earlier. We are going to go back and set it all up for you, how the four skiers that we have qualified for the semifinals. There are eight skiers in the first round. The top four seeds in each pairing advance into the finals, defeating the lower seed. So LaPointe, Robert, Shaylander, and Morgan, the only four skiers we've seen win a solemn title on the tour this year. And our first semifinal matchup was between two good ones, Bob LaPointe and Carl Robert. We will pick it up as we look back at a 37-foot rope length, and it's Bob LaPointe on Champion Lake. This was a key matchup because Bob is behind Carl in the overall tour race for the slalom title, but he just doesn't get a good start, not quite standing on the ski the way we've seen Bob before. This is where he set his world record, which was later tied by Andy Mapple. So only three buoys in his run. That made it pretty easy for Carl Robert. He knew what he had to do, and he made quick work of the situation. Bob's performance really put no real pressure on Carl. Carl's timing and technique getting better each week. Carl doing a good job protecting his lead and trying to increase the gap between him and Bob, and it looks like he's going to do it and advance into the finals. He went down around buoy number five, but it didn't matter. He got credit for four and a half, and that is enough to put Carl Robert into the finals, and he does indeed protect that 100-point margin that he had over Bob LaPointe in the Grand Prix standing. That's one semifinal. The other semifinal was a dandy. Mike Shaylander, who dominated the men's slalom last year, against Mike Morgan, who won last week. Shaylander was first up at 37 feet, and this really gets interesting. We saw quite a contrast in styles here. Shaylander's power and strength against Morgan's rhythm and timing. Mike, who has that radical turn on that right there, the first buoy, the left side of the course. But he had a slow turn around number two, had to get stretched out on three and takes a brutal fall trying to get out to number four. So he is credited with three buoys at 37 feet. At that point, it looked simple enough for Mike Morgan. All he had to do was make the pass and move into the finals. But it was not going to be that easy at 37 feet for Mike Morgan. It's never easy when the rope is a half a foot shorter than the width of the course. Remember, the buoys are set 37 and a half feet from the center line. Morgan's smaller, he'll make quicker turns. As the rope gets shorter, the skiers make sharper turns, and he comes out of two very well. But what happened, he took it too easy around number three and just gets around number four, but the judges decided he didn't have the rope in his hand and scores three and ties Shaylander. So that meant re-ride. Well, they went back out at that same 37-foot length. Both were able to manage four buoys on their next attempt. So that meant one more rerun. Shaylander went out first. He completed three. Mike Morgan's turn to go back out, but he had some problems. We had to stop. Figured out what was wrong. We had to stop. My binding's we broken. How much time do I have? What did you say? My binding's broken. How much time do I have? You don't have any in slalom. Is there a screwdriver in there? No, there's not. We don't have any time, Mike. We have to go. Okay. I'm sorry. This is going to okay, be fun. Okay, here we come. Yeah. It's completely broken. There's only one screw holding in. But fun it would not be for Mike Morgan on this second runoff. There was not much he could do. Mike made only one buoy, but he gave it a great shot, essentially only having one foot securely in the binding. And at that point, it looked like it was all over for Mike Morgan in Shreveport. He went back to the dock. His only chance, another appeal to the judges. Mike requested three minutes to have his equipment corrected. It's very technical in that uh, had it been during the regular runoff, he would not have been allowed that three minutes. However, Rue states that during a tie, or a runoff for a tie, he can have three minutes. And the judge made a bad decision. 
So there would be another runoff, and he got some time to repair the ski and get set to go back on the water again. Yeah, he enlists an army of people to fix his ski, and he gets another good start, gets pulled out a little bit, but he really had a fine run, and we'll see here, he gets the quarter buoy he was trying so hard, a slide for life, but he advances into the final against Carl Robert. It seemed like it took forever, but finally, he got that quarter buoy that he needed. All of this time, Michael Shalander had been waiting, but it is Mike Morgan who finally came out the winner in our second semifinal. So the final matchup is set here in Shreveport. Morgan will go back to work on his ski. And when we return, we'll see if he can get it ready for a championship run as he takes on Carl Roberge in the finals. Now the leader in the tour by 100 points over Bob. Did you expect to be in this position? Well, Wayne, I've been training really hard for it. I think last year I was down a little bit because of an injury, but uh, this year things are going a lot better. And the water out here today is terrific, isn't it? I tell you what, the conditions out there are the best I've ever seen out here, and uh, it's just definitely world record water, and uh, I just everyone's going to be going for it. All righty, good luck this afternoon. Thank you, Wayne. 37 feet, that's a half a foot shorter than the distance to the buoy. The advantage is certainly in Carl's court here. He's been resting while Mike had to endure a marathon runoff. 37 feet timing and turns have to be right on the nose. Carl comes into number four, down in the water. He's late for five. Can he pull and get around number six? It looks like he's down. <laughs> it's an exceptional effort to try to get around number six, and I think that's going to be difficult to beat. He could not pull it back around the sixth buoy, so he is credited with five and one quarter. Let's see where he gets in trouble. Carl edges away very hard, tries to slow down, but he's got so much speed. He gets pulled out of the turn and fights and digs to get outside of number six. And I thought he had it, but his body hits the water, kicks the ski out. Now, sometimes they can pop back up on the ski, but not this time. Mike Morgan now has made several passes at 37 feet. He has not made six yet today. He must do it now if he is going to win for the second week in a row. And the start is so very important. Mike turns well off of both sides of the course. Gets a great turn off of two. His timing and body position seem to be right in sync with each other, resulting in some terrific turns. And he's going to get around number six, but he's got all sorts of slack. Not going to hang on, but he was in skiing position at the first wake, and he'll get six buoys, and that's our champion. Mike Morgan, not able to completely come out of the gate, but he had the technique, the best run he's made all day at 37 feet. Mike showed us not only some brilliant turns, but also some tremendous endurance. Two victories back to back. He's really becoming a very consistent force in the slalom. Mike Morgan, the hottest skier in men's slalom right now on the Coors Light Water Ski Tour. And we're in Shreveport, Louisiana, where he has locked up his second consecutive championship. You think it's hot on the water. It's also very hot on the shores of Champion Lake. And the hottest skier in this event is with Wayne Grimditch. To be perfectly honest, when Carl ran five and a quarter, I think it was going to be a, it was a winning run. But whatever you did out there paid off. I guess it did, Wayne. I saw him do that, and my heart just kind of sank. But, you know, it, it's never too in to, uh, to do anything. I've been running it all week in practice. I told the people in the boat, I said, hey, how's about now? That would be the perfect time in the finals with all the crowd here. And it came through, and I'm just so happy. How much did the extra runs take out of you? A whole lot, Wayne. Uh, they started uh, egging away at me there first two or three times. By four or five, it was plain ridiculous. By the sixth time I've been through it 38 off, I guess I was just about on the end of my rope. But uh, I dug down deep, and I guess that's what being a champion is all about. Congratulations. Two victories back to back. It's a great feeling, Wayne. I really appreciate it. He was at the right end of his rope to win the championship and 1,000 Grand Prix points as they try to pile up the points and the extra money that comes at the end of the trail. And as we look at the standings overall right now in men's slalom, Carl Robert with a 200-point lead over both Mike Morgan and Bob LaPointe after this event on the Coors Light Water Ski Tour. Coming up next is the men's distance jumping. We've seen some spills in the slalom. The spills are even greater in the chances of injury in the men's distance jumping, but there are safety factors. Here's Wayne. With the jumper hitting the ramp at 70 miles an hour and reaching 21 feet in the air, danger is always present, more so in this event than in the slalom event. So certain safety precautions are taken. There's an ambulance and medical staff on shore, and the skiers wear protective.